Hello, my name is Rudy Cavazos. I'm the founder and president of The Bridge Path. We are a nonprofit 501c3 organization. We focus on providing financial education by uh, mentoring and by consulting to not only families and individuals, but also small business owners. We want to thank HCC for giving us this opportunity and this platform today uh, to provide one of our presentations called Life Happens Now What? I'd also like to extend my thanks to a couple of kind and generous um, uh, partners, financial institutions, that um, without their support, uh, we wouldn't be able to provide the assistance that's necessary in our community to uh, the clients that we have. Um, Capital One Bank, thank you very much, and Comerica Bank, thank you very much for your kind and generous support. So uh, today I was invited to provide a presentation on Life Happens Now What? Uh, we pretty much know the situation that we're in, um, COVID-19. It's affecting everyone, consumers as well as small business owners. So today's scenario is job loss and or a temporary reduction income. Two situations in which we are um, not always very well prepared. Many consumers, uh, small business owners, uh, don't have the necessary means to cover emergency expenses for more than a month. Um, it's difficult to understand that, but yes, it does happen. Uh, we speak to a lot of consumers and a lot of small business owners that uh, that emergency savings account is just non-existent. You know, the effort that to, uh, to actually create one and to have one, the desire is always there. However, um, not a lot of money in there. So anyway, uh, we can move on past that because today uh, we have suggestions. We have some guidance um, that can help both Joe Consumer and the small business owner um, try to work through this situation as best they can. First thing that we always recommend is don't panic. You know, we, there's, there's always resources. There's always assistance out there that we can um, count on uh, helping us out. Um, but the one thing that we do um, focus on is that um, we need to create what we call a crisis spending plan. What is a crisis spending plan? Well, that's a spending plan. I like to use spending plan instead of budget. Um, that maintains and sustains, whether it's the household or the small business. Uh, special factors need to be looked at carefully. And uh, those special factors, categories, are called fixed cost, okay? Those are those expenses that um, in a crisis spending plan, we need to document and know exactly what they are, how much they are. Fixed costs are those that um, are expenses that don't change. The amount doesn't change every month, meaning a mortgage payment, meaning a lease payment to the space that you're leasing for your business, uh, auto payments. Those all stay the same. So we need to know exactly what we owe who we owe that are fixed cost. Second, we need to evaluate our variable cost. Variable costs are exactly that. They vary every month. So um, this is pretty much where a lot of consumers and a lot of small business owners are going to be able to make adjustments, make some modification so that we can maintain ourselves and sustain our businesses and families liquid during this difficult time. Um, We'll talk about those variable costs a little more in depth down the road. Periodic cost. Periodic cost. Um, those are expenses that happen once or twice a year. We're asking consumers and small business owners to kind of put a hold on those. Um, for instance, Joe Consumer would, be, uh, would have a periodic cost account or a mental note that um, we need to save us some money for uh, holiday expenses. And right now we can maybe, like I said, take our foot off the pedal on that. Uh, we need to have that money go into more um, expenses that are, are at a higher priority as of now during this COVID-19 situation. So periodic cost, let's put a hold. Variable cost, let's evaluate and modify. Let's do away with some of those. Uh, perhaps even uh, pause some expenses, like for instance, um, membership to a gym, um, maybe entertainment, uh, those types of expenses that uh, most of the time are pretty much all right within our budget, 
but right now we need to eliminate them we need to put a pause on them and um, make that variable expense each month as lean and mean as we can uh, if this crisis spending plan is going to work and as I mentioned the fixed costs you know we can't change those and uh, but we need to know who they are and how much they are how much money we need to have every month in order to take care of those so maintain and sustain right we've got to keep that in mind that oh, we've got to do whatever it takes so that we can maintain and sustain um, so what that involves also is understanding the outstanding debt aside of what we need to pay every month to maintain and sustain our household to maintain and sustain our work our job our business we also need to assess what is our outstanding debt today okay the debt needs to be categorized under three different categories one priority debt For example IRS debt student loan debt okay those are government back backed debts that we need to pay no matter what okay uh, these types of debts not even under bankruptcy can we discharge them so priority debt second secured debt that's a mortgage those are lease payments to trucks to vehicles um, auto loans they're secured debt because they have some sort of personal property backing them up okay we don't pay they come take their property right so priority debt secured debt and then finally unsecured debt unsecured debt everyone knows what unsecured debt is credit cards all you did was sign an application they give you a line of credit okay you didn't put up any property you didn't um, cross any equipment uh, to gain that access to that credit limit it's unsecured all right so once you know what your outstanding debt is and you've categorized them under those three category categories excuse me um, then we need to take into mind what we need to do with them right well what we need to do with them is to communicate with our creditors slash and or vendors communicate not hard pick up a phone write an email let them know that you're interested to find out what you're able to do as of today as it pertains to the COVID-19 example um, credit card companies they have hardship departments that you can contact and let them know what's going on in the household amid this COVID-19 pandemic many times these credit card companies from what I've read what I've been told by some some of them directly is that they're going to defer forgive payments for a couple of months a month depending on your creditor who it is but the important thing here is that you need to communicate with them but let's go up to those uh, priority debts priority debt um, IRS student loans yes pick up the phone forget about email pick up the phone contact them and find out what they are willing to offer during the COVID-19 explain your situation of what you're going through whether it was a job loss a temporary job loss or if you're a small business owner you're trying to hold on to much, as much cash to maintain some employees maybe a skeleton crew but you're holding on to some employees so that you don't have to let go of everyone or furlough some of your employees let them know exactly what's going on IRS student loans they're deferring payments okay um, mortgage companies they offer forbearance um, they offer modifications but they are offering an opportunity to help you during this situation this COVID-19 situation they do have plans they do have options but you do need to contact them pick up that phone and contact them uh, one important thing about all this that I'm saying is that you also need to document every conversation that you're having with these creditors no matter if it's uh, a $500 limit on a small credit card and you're checking with them to see what they have to offer whether a skip payment or not, make sure that you write down who you spoke to what date what time and what was agreed to especially specifically when it comes to the bigger debt the more important debt, the priority debt the secured debt you want to make sure you keep track of that you document who you're speaking with what terms you came into agreement with and remember speaking of agreements remember 
Um, mortgage loans, lease accounts. Um, sometimes these payments may be forgiven. Sometimes they may be um, a forbearance might be given or a deferment. Be clear about that and be clear of what happens after this COVID-19 finally passes through. What are your responsibilities on these payments that you no longer had to make during this period of time? Okay, understand that clearly because you don't want to be caught off guard six months from today. Your mortgage company, your lease uh, uh, finance company saying, well, those three, four payments that we allowed you to skip, they're due today. They're due now. They're due in 30 days. Be aware of that. Ask. Be informed. Educate yourself. Be ready. Okay? Uh, if it was you, think about it. If you extended someone a loan and you told them, I'm going to go ahead and forgive you one, two, three months, but sooner or later, you're going to want your money. Okay? They Same thing with them. So be aware. Document all conversations and be aware what's going to happen after this COVID-19. Right? Uh, having said that, you know, not everybody um, needs to skip mortgage payments, lease payments, and good for you. You know, you have that emergency savings to, 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 to cover, to help you for the next six months, 12 months. That's wonderful. Don't, don't take advantage of these skip payments, deferred payments, forbearance, or anything. Go ahead and continue paying on these debts. Yeah, I mean, it's a debt. You owe it, so go ahead and continue making your payments. Um, because eventually, all these creditors are going to want their money back. That's just a fact. And so if you can do it now, go ahead. Again, having said that, those that have been forgiven, those that have been given deferrals, missed opportunities to make their payments, um, honestly, don't use that money to go buy that 65-inch um, LED or 4K TV or you know some new um, fishing equipment, whatever the case may be. That's not what the money is for. The money is for you to hold on to. If things get dire, you're going to have that backing. You're going to have that money ready to help you overcome six, eight, nine months down the road on absolute necessities. So don't go out and spend it. Hold on to it. Okay. Um, creditors. I cannot emphasize this as much or more. Do not avoid your creditor phone calls. Do not avoid reaching out to them and communicating with them. That is so important. They prefer to hear from you. Um, let them know what's going on. Explain what's going on. And they have, well, especially now. Now things are a little more lenient. They're willing to work with you. Um, and uh, they're going to have options for you. So do not avoid the phone calls. Get ahead of the game. Pick up the phone, you call them and ask them what they have to offer during this COVID-19 pandemic and uh, see what you can work out. They um, they prefer to have open lines for communication with you than uh, not know what's going on. Uh, they don't hear from you. They're going to think the worst that you're hiding and uh, don't want to talk to them. And uh, no creditor wants to uh, uh, feel that way. So creditors, vendors, it's smarter to go ahead and pick up the phone, give them a call, let them know what's going on, ask them what's uh, what's available during this period of time, COVID-19, document, document, document. That way everyone is certain that you're on the, on, on the same page and there isn't any misunderstandings. All right, so don't avoid your creditors. Um, I want to provide a little bit of a beware situation because uh, sadly, there's organizations, there's individuals, there's groups of people out there trying to take advantage of your general consumer, even small business owners. Now that uh, things seem to be difficult, things seem to be, um, yeah, a new area uh, where a lot of people are not comfortable dealing with that. You know, you don't know if you're, you're if you're going to have another paycheck. You're not. You don't know whether you're going to be able to pay your staff. Uh, so uh, on the internet, uh, telephone, uh, emails. There's going to be all sorts of offers. Uh, be very careful. And um, um, these opportunities are looking for people that uh, are, are desperate 
and uh, are looking for alternative uh, methods to uh, to cover some financial um, responsibility, be very very careful because uh, they're out there just to uh, to take your money. Um, you know, maybe through a um, a fee to complete an application. Uh, that's the most common, and uh, so be very aware of that. Um, let your um, family know. Let your elders know. Uh, those are kind of sort of the biggest target, the elders, and um, just don't fall prey to these uh, predators. And speaking of predators, predatory lending. Yeah, yeah. today because the paychecks aren't there every week or every couple of weeks, uh, a lot of people are having difficult making ends meet, and they are um, uh, offering up the title to their, their, their car or truck. Uh, they're putting up checks as collateral for a, uh, uh, a check cashing uh, loan short term. Yes, those are uh, uh, quick and easy um, uh, options. However, they are very, very um, dangerous. Uh, you can get in a cycle where uh, it's difficult to get out of. And um, obviously, um, the interest rate on these financial products is through the roof. And I'm talking maybe sometimes I've seen up to 1,400% on a, on, a, on, a, on a loan of $200, $300. So uh, be very, very uh, cautious of predatory lending. Uh, when we're dealing with creditors, you know, um, um, this is a time that maybe even settlement companies will be calling to say, hey, you know, um, settlement companies are like collection companies and so forth, and they might be ranked in the same, in the same breath. Uh, be careful with that, uh, especially now. Uh, I think the best thing to do now is just to politely tell them that, you know what, during this COVID-19, right now I'm trying to maintain and sustain my household, my business, and uh, I'm not ready to make any payment arrangements, but perhaps six months down the road, give me a call. Nine months down the road, we can look at this and see what I can do to take care of this outstanding debt that is already in collections and work work something out with you. Remember, document, document, document. So um, under the beware um, aspect of our uh, situation today, uh, remember that when something sounds too good to be true, it probably is. So um, what about alternative income? I mean, we've got, uh, yeah, if you're unemployed, then you can uh, apply for unemployment. Um, recently, I read that uh, the government is offering an additional $600 uh, to your um, unemployment check. Uh, remember one thing, this unemployment check, this money that you're receiving, it's taxable. So at the end of the year, you're going to need to pay taxes on it. Now, uh, when you apply and you're approved, you can have the government take up 10 percent and uh, that's probably the best route so i suggest you go ahead and let them take out their 10 percent that way you're not hit with a huge tax bill at the end of the year so alternative income where do we get some more income if it's not um, um you know from uh, idle or it's not from ppp or it's not from unemployment if it's not well definitely don't consider your 401k plan or your IRA. You don't want to go there. You don't want to liquidate that. Uh, the penalty for using and taking that money out is extremely high. So let's, let's put that way down on the priority list. We talked about credit cards. Yeah, you know, um, you know that it's better to have 30% credit utilization below 30%, I'm sorry, below 30% credit utilization. That means that if you have a credit limit of $1,000, uh, you don't want to owe on the balance more than $300. So you got to keep it low. However, times are difficult today. I understand that. So if you're going to use your credit card, try to use your credit cards to a minimum. If you don't have to skip your minimum payment on your credit cards, go ahead and make your minimum payment you know, on your credit card, but keep your use to a minimum. Extra income. Yeah, well, how about making a list of assets? I, uh, I know plenty of small business owners that have uh, things lying around the shop, things lying around the, the company that, uh, well, maybe it's time to sell them. Uh, at home, same thing. Maybe you have an extra vehicle, a motorcycle um, that you don't really use at all. May, might be time to liquidate that. That's extra income. Sure. Why not? Online. 
yeah online selling yeah that's it's it's spring right it's spring so start selling your things online um, that's a another uh, stream of income that will be helpful uh, to cover some of the expenses while there's a temporary loss of income or reduction of income or maybe even a total loss of income anything helps think outside the box and thinking outside the box consulting contract services yeah you know my business clients I uh, they might be experts in um, computers yeah um, contract those services up to neighbors put an ad out you know and uh, you don't have to go to their homes they can you can meet transfer the laptop the desktop you work on it at home blah blah, blah. you know limiting social distancing and all that yeah it can work contract services yeah I've got a few clients business clients they have fleets of trucks and vehicles well they're lending those vehicles and trucks to restaurants to help them deliver the food that people are ordering because you know most of the time a restaurant either they don't have delivery and now they have to or they have delivery but maybe they had just a limited amount of vehicles and now you've got other companies that have plenty of vehicles so you see what I'm saying thinking outside the box using your assets and, and yeah, it works. It's extra income. Um, COVID-19. Um, yeah, uh, for small business owners, there's definitely uh, some resources. I would recommend that um, um, these resources be um, um, contacted. For instance, your bank, the bank. If you're a small business owner and you have a, uh, a banking, a checking banking account there, contact them and um, um, ask them about the opportunities that the federal government is offering through SBA, Small Business Administration, that's IDLE or PPP, the Payroll Protection Program and the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. That's who you need to go to, your bank. They will give you information on that, help you with the application and the entire process. Um, if you don't have time, then go check out sba.gov. They have the information on their website. And there you can get all the information you need as far as what documents you need and whether you qualify or not. Okay. Uh, small business owners, again, um, if you feel that you need more information, contact your local SCORE representative, SCORE.org, HoustonScore.org, SBDC, Small Business Development um, corporation again uh, they're online and um, micro lenders like my friends over at lift fund they provide micro lending and um, they are part of this idle and PPP so give them a call if you're not getting the answers that you need or maybe you don't have a business checking account at a bank or financial institution but you do have a business contact them they can give you some of the information that you require in order to apply for these funds to help you and your employees stay working okay so um, small business or administration is sba.gov score SBDC and lift fund okay. so <clears throat> other resources you know this is a time to be considering all resources available and uh, another one that I, uh, I failed to mention earlier is a chamber chamber of commerce your local chamber of commerce they have great information i uh, belong to a few and they, they're they're putting out some great webinars some great uh podcasts um on updates on all resources not only for small business but also for the community in general so you know look up your local chamber of commerce on the web and they should have information on there you know, a lot of people have been asking me, you know, what about if I miss these payments? You know, even with the permission from the creditor, even with a, a deferment or a, a this and that, is that going to affect my credit score? Well, if your creditor uh, has told you that you skipping a payment is not going to matter, ask them, is it going to affect my credit score? Is it going to be recorded on my credit bureau, on your three credit history reports, Experian, Equifax, TransUnion, ask them up front, how is this going to affect? It shouldn't. All the, the articles that I've read, um, some of the creditors that I've spoken to, 
indicate that they are not going to report to the major credit bureaus that you had skipped a payment or if you've been forgiven a payment. But it's always a good idea to double check with your creditor. Um, I love a uh, website called mint.com, mint, right? Mint.com, it has a lot of resources on helping you create a spending plan, resources to uh, manage your checking accounts and so forth. Give it a look. Um, they have great information there as well as nerdwallet.com. A lot of articles regarding to the COVID-19, how it's affecting small business owners and Joe Consumer. Give them a visit. Um, I always love to mention that uh, there is a website called optoutprescreen.com. Too many people are still receiving um, collection calls, marketing phone calls. And uh, so just put your, uh, your, your, your email and your phone number there and you should be okay um, and no longer be receiving these types of phone calls and emails. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, you know, the Bridge Path is a 501c3 organization and uh, we provide consulting and mentoring services to individuals, families, and small business owners. Everything that um, um, falls under financial money management and uh, credit management. So we are very proud and uh, very pleased that we were invited to provide you with this information. I hope you found it uh, interesting and helpful. I believe we're going to have this um, available uh, at hccs.edu uh, slash small business where you can add, watch it again, maybe pass it on to a friend, a uh, family member uh, that might, they might find it beneficial. We appreciate that. Uh, if you need to contact The Bridge Path, please visit us at uh, thebridgepath.org um, on the net. And um, there's contact information there to me directly and uh, or via email. Um, we invite you to uh, to send us a question, send us some feedback. And uh, I can promise you that we'll get back with you and we'll get back with you with the information, uh, the response to your question or some feedback so that um, we can help you move through this COVID pandemic process. I shouldn't call it a process situation. Um, easier and as best as you can because it involves all of us. So there's going to be time for questions and um, we'll give that to um, our audience. And um, I just want to say again, thank you very much for your, this opportunity and um, good luck. Stay safe. Be blessed. Thank you.